Yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I never, I, this happens all the time. I never say to people, introduce yourself, or I just wait. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Hannah Moro Ferrell. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, you're with us uh, for our emergency podcast on Don't Worry Darling, uh, which feels mm-hmm. like uh, it was only two months ago, but feels. Two months ago was two weeks ago, Tom. It wasn't two weeks ago. Now you're trying. Now you're gaslighting me. Now you're trying to. It was oh, not you're doing two a, months ago. <laughs> you're doing a jack. You're doing a. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I'm a gaslighter. You've been, I've, well, I've got the date. It was. I think maybe like three weeks, four weeks ago. It was not two months. Okay, so it was Sunday the twenty fifth of September. So maybe I've. I'm. So yeah. three weeks. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that's. All, I'll allow it. Um, we're in the middle. <laughs> we're in the middle. That's not true either. We're not in the middle. Technically, we're in the middle. Um, anyway, we're around the 80s of mm-hmm. our Sondheim celebration, which was already planned, uh, but then he died. And uh, so now it's a memoriam. Uh, so me and Will are doing 21 episodes going through everything. But I wanted a few bonus episodes as well, because I just can't get enough. And uh, before we get to what you chose as your bonus episode, Hannah, uh, let's talk a little bit about your relationship with Mr. Stephen Sondheim. Of course, you are a member of the arts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, what was your What was your introduction to? Uh, uh, the Sweeney Todd movie. <laughs> it's a good. Yeah. It was mine. It was mine. It was mine. Oh, I'm not going. Sorry. Can I hold on a moment? Jazz wants to say hi. She's oh, calling. Jazz. She can't come on. Wait, Jazz, say hi to Carruthers. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Jazz, do you remember what you said when I told you that me and Leanne were doing a podcast on Into the Woods? No, what did you say? No, what did you say? I said I hate Into the Woods. She hates Into the Woods. I don't know how you can hate Into the Woods, but okay. That's beside the point. First of all. Second of all, Hannah, what do you want from Duncan? Hash browns. Oh, no, Duncan. Just uh, like I'll a pause. Little bit. One minute, let me pause. <laughs> the world does not need to know your Duncan Donuts are. Uh, that was the wonderful jazz. Um, who refused uh, to do a Sunday bonus episode? Uh, anyway, really? that's just... Well, yes, I know. She oh. she was uh, she was invited. Now, the um, we were talking about... Yeah, Sweet Sweeney Todd, the film... Uh, what what happened then? Did it did it all blossom like a flower, or did you just stumble across uh, things later? Yeah, I think controversially, I was never that much of a Sondheim fan. I don't know why. I don't know why in my head I was like, Ooh, Were you I'm edgy? I was such a pick me. I was like, ah, I'm not gonna like Sondheim because I only like contemporary musicals. Um, yeah, I know. And then, uh, when I came to Rose Bruford, we had to write a review on a play. Or like a oh. musical or anything. And I was just scrolling through Digital Theatre Plus and they had the Regent's Park version of Into the Woods. And I was like, oh, I'll just watch that. And mm. yeah, I loved it. It's so good. It's a very good mm-hmm. version. Well, this is why this is why you're here. Um <laughs> yeah. uh, because it's a uh, uh, with 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 the uh, with our series. Uh, me and Will will be focusing specifically uh, on the 1982 original Broadway production, of course. Uh, however, uh, it cannot be underestimated that um, 
I would say, arguably, uh, if not the most successful revival. Well, no, critically and commercially, it's pretty bit. It's been tremendously successful. But I think the most influential um, revival of Into the Woods, uh, and certainly with the most adaptations, which I think we can talk about, is this Regent's Park production, which then uh, transferred to Broadway as a uh, theatre in Central Park uh, mm. production. Um, so what was what, what did you know of Into the Woods before watching that specific production? Did you know of the music? Had you seen the abysmal I, film? Had you? Yes, I had seen the film. And I think that also added to my whole I hate Sondheim thing because that film is horrendous. And I remember being so excited for it because there were so many like big names in it. And mm. I was like, oh my God, cool. And then I was watching it and I was like, I am so confused. I don't know what's going on why why it should have ended like an hour and a half into the film um <laughs> but obviously that's the point of into the woods is that it's like oh you get your happy ending and then oh no yeah actually. it's uh, um I, yes i well i haven't rewatched the film yet uh for we're right. recording this <laughs> i have to I mean, I, this is the <laughs> this is the pain i've set up for myself uh yes this oh this will come out before um, so this will come out before uh, we. T- it will be the next, the very next thing to come out will be me and Will talking about the Into the Woods um, film. Uh, anyway, that's beside the point. But um, yes, yeah, so beyond the Into the Woods, so obviously you didn't enjoy the film, so I'm guessing you didn't then uh, rush to download the original soundtrack or anything like that. No, I did. No. I definitely did not. Um, yeah, I don't. I I listened to the soundtrack when we we did like a singing class in first year where peter peter willard mm-hmm. um yeah oh did you do the finale no the prologue oh well yeah. the, with me and, we, me and peter uh we <laughs> we did we did for our christmas showcase our ending was the uh was the finale was um last minute not last minute pardon me I call it Last Midnight, but there's a song called Last Midnight. Let's call it third. Anyway, the final, the slot the final one can catch the potato into, <laughs> uh, into uh, No One Is Alone reprise, into Children Will Listen, into uh, into the Woods finale. So, yes, the finale, the final five minutes. And um, I directed it. Uh, oh, he, he said, he, he said, oh, what did he say? He said something like, uh, it's a big number, uh, big challenge, and I, I think you're up for it. And I said, Yes. Uh, and I choreographed it, Anna, I'll have you know. I know. But, oh, my God. <laughs> I was surprised as you were. <laughs> no, the, um, <laughs> yes, I, no, I choreographed that. So I, I have a great epiphany. Mm-hmm. Epiphany? A bit, oh, what's the word? I like it. I you like, like it. <laughs> uh, affinity. Let's not, you have a great affinity. affinity. That's it, yes. Uh, but uh, before that, of course, I, I loved uh, Into the Woods. I love, I love everything. Did you do Sundown Week with Chris? Uh, yes, we did. Oh, what was your Sundown? So me and me and Hannah are in the same course three years apart. Anyway, and we did a wonderful, I think I might, I might have talked to, I, I probably mentioned it on this really Todd episode because of my critically acclaimed performance of Epiphany that um, <laughs> everybody loved. Uh, that's beside the point. But each week you go through musical theatre and uh, part of the training and the great aspect of the wonderful Christopher Dickens' teaching yeah. is that you have to bring in a song. And what better way to illuminate that period of uh, that week than to choose a song? And there is, of course, Sondheim Week, which I ended up curating a little bit because people kept coming to me and I was like, oh, you can sing this. But I don't know why I did that because all you it led all to... The good ones. <laughs> no, all it all it ended up was this is I I was obviously didn't hear any of you guys sing, but all it ended up was was me having to listen to people, um, just but not but yes you can say it. Um, <laughs> some of my favorite like literally my favorite songs ever written. So that was sad. What did you perform on Sunday weekend? Um, funnily enough, I sang Last Midnight. <laughs> so it feels like this musical has just like been with me through my entire drama school career like it's just Mm -hmm. every year it's just like another thing and I remember I remember singing that song and like doing the little witch's cackle at the end and everybody Mm -hmm. applauding and I was like oh my god the power and then Leanne sang my favorite song from the show uh which is maybe they're magic (laughs) oh shut up no (laughs) stay with me stay with me and I cried I cried I did know did I know that she sang this Oh, I must have done because I would have. I, 
There must have been no no recording because I would have begged. I, I love Leah, and I would have begged to hear that. I um, uh, well, this is my theory. There are certain songs that can't be done badly. Yeah, and obviously, with 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 multiple weeks now of Into the Woods, I've I've yet to go. I've yet to have fatigue, and I think that says a lot. Mm-hmm. Is that I thought heading into this, ooh. Am I going to get a little bit fatigued doing multiple into the woods? Because we're doing, we did multiple companies and we did multiple tods, um, and I can, I'll, I'll never fatigue. But into the woods, I was like, oh, is it going to get a little bit clawing? And it never did, and it never has. And um, the specific, what my probably my favorite, not my favorite lyric, not my favorite uh, sing sung moment, shall we say? But probably my favorite. Performative, I don't know how to say. I very much enjoy in Stay With Me. Who out there could love you more than I? And I don't think anybody can sing that badly. Um because no. it's not it's not necessarily a hard note to hit, but if you even put a little bit of emotion into that, oh. it, it's it's a good like her material. voice did like a little like like emotional crackle, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I like broke down in tears. It was it's just such a beautiful song. And like every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm just going to cry. Mm. I'm just going to cry. Um, and obviously, Bernadette Peters does it oh, so well. <gasps> so, <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to the Bettina Miller version because obviously there's a Very current good. Broadway revival. And I love Bettina Miller, but I mm. don't think I enjoy her as the, the witch. witch. I think it, she she brings a very different flavor to the role than Bernadette, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I just don't think I enjoy it as much. It's a very very musically competent, uh, very well sung recording um, mm-hmm. of the role. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd say I, I, it's none of none of the versions have stuck out for me really. None of the because obviously when we make the. Um, Sondheim Song Canon, which I'm sure you follow on Spotify, <laughs> uh, the ultimate Sondheim Song Canon. We take through, uh, we, it started off as we take through our top four or our top five, but that quickly devolved into, let's just have eight. <laughs> yeah. <from Sweeney>. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for that, I choose my favourite versions of each song. Uh, and I try to distribute across different albums, uh, because if in reality, um, with Todd's, it would probably all be the 2012 Imelda Storm recording or or with company, probably would be that original Broadway cast album recording. So I try to distribute, I try to be, I try to be fair. Mm. And I don't know any, yeah, if, if any of those Patina Miller recordings will 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 make it on there. But um mm. well, I don't know what six songs will make it through to the uh to the final canon. Course, we have. I have. I don't. We, I have not actually recorded that episode. Yes, very exciting. Oh, only six I, songs. That does not seem like enough. It sometimes stretches to seven. I. I think the most is. I think Todd maybe has eight, and I think Company has. Um, anyway, I'll send you the playlist after it. <clears throat> you can. You can uh, get angry and get happy <laughs> on, on all manner of things. Uh, we're talking today. Mm-hmm. Specifically, I wanted you to talk about uh, the Regents Park production. We can keep branching. Did you get it? Uh, yeah. You can keep branching <laughs> into other areas of the woods. Uh, but for now, let's be more specific and talk about this 2010 production that was, yes, filmed for uh, digital theatre. Um, big changes. Now, I hadn't... Now, I came to know of this production... Because I went to see an amateur production with my ex, uh, which was run by her, not run by, but she had, uh, was it an aunt? Yes, it was, a, yeah, anyway, aunt, family, uh, or in the the meeting board, let's call it, of the theatre, of the of this amateur theatre. And uh, that's how I, well, I, I, I won that dinner conversation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, and we went to uh, see it. And a child was narrating. And um, this was the first time said X had ever seen Into the Woods or ever listened. She had a big thing about, I don't want to listen. She didn't like listening to recordings um, to anything she hadn't seen. Okay. She, which I kind of understand a little bit. I mean, I still have longing memories of the 
I, getting the Book of Mormon CD as a kid and sitting oh. in my room and reading yeah. the little booklets and all that <laughs> sort of stuff. And my mum and grandma talk often about how they first bought the Phantom of the Opera vinyl and literally sat on the floor with the huge uh, booklet that had the libretto and all that sort of uh, truncated libretto. But I do kind of understand uh, where she's coming from, but that's beside the point. But that's another story. Never mind. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> and there was a child and I thought, oh, no, what is this? Now, that wasn't the biggest problem with that production. The biggest problem was that it was all a video game. <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they kept glitching and he had his iPad and, oh, the, kid, no. and the kid couldn't talk. Anyway, that was that was that. That was the real problem, but it was the but it was the kid and the um, uh, single dad. Um, they don't really belabor the point in this production. Actually, that the mothers died. Or you can you can infer it maybe. Yeah. Or in this, they literally said, <laughs> "Oh, your mother's. Di- I'm sorry, <laughs> your mother's died." Oh Jesus! Um, oh come on, step into the light now. Oh. Um, Let's talk about this. Do you think it works? I loved it. I I think when I I watched it, I was like, this. First of all, I was like, this child is questionable at the start. Yes, and then... he's so bad, and then he gets good. <laughs> yes, and then he like turns it around, and I was like, wait, I'm kind of on board with this, and I mm. like the idea that like he's telling these stories to himself. I just think it's yes. sweet. I think it starts off, I think the first act, it's a flawless device and it's a really good change. Well, no, it's not a really good change. I still prefer the narrator as as written. I think it works. The problem is when it comes to the second act and suddenly you've got, the, the narrator becomes more involved and bit by bit, yeah. slowly, some of the narrator's lines, they can't change the book, so they have to keep things. And, and suddenly, I've got them all noted down on it more specifically. Um, but I, I, I do think overall it works. It is just kind of painting with a broad stroke what is kind of already there mm. in in everything. Hearing the la- having the baker's wife's ghost come to the baker and sing, you know, um, those beautiful words. Um, sometimes people leave you halfway through the woods. Everybody in the audience immediately starts thinking about those they've lost, about children. I don't... It's it's just kind of putting it right there. Yeah. And it's like, I get it. I do get it, but I got that from before. I don't yeah. need a child and a father to be literally on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it. You know, children yeah. will listen. <laughs> you know, I get, I get it. All the same, it does work and it is sweet. Yeah, I think... Yeah, and I, I just, I like how it becomes like meta theatre as well. Like the whole show at the end anyway is kind of like crazy. But um, yes. so yeah, I don't know. I think it just, it adds. And, and it like, for children in the audience, I think they'll like see themselves more in the narrator. There, and there I don't time, think Into yeah. the Woods is a show for children. I wouldn't bring a child necessarily to see it because it's kind of dark, especially um, Little Red's song about being yeah. a which is one of my favorite songs, but it's also like, ah, yikes. But yeah, I think I think children will be able to see themselves more in it if they see a literal child on stage. And there's a, that's for me when the child works best is when he's listening to Giants in the Sky and he's just got this feverish excitement and he's so happy and it's like, oh, oh, you know, it's so exciting. Or when he's sat to the side during maybe their magic and it's like listening to the parents arguing in the other room that all mm-hmm. works obviously it's you know it's it's, it's right there you, yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's on the nose it's on the nose but like some things in theater have to be and i think that's true <laughs> i think yeah. it i think it works still i i like this production yes i i i i do yes for the most part like it yeah. Um, I, I, I wouldn't choose to. It has a lot of things that annoy me normally. Uh, in general, like what? I, I hate people talking uh, instead <laughs> okay. of singing. I think I do. I've come to this realization: is that there's so many. 
I don't know. Jenna Russell is a great example of good talking, acting, singing. Mm -hmm. She's no Imelda, but she's got that quality and it works. In this production, there are a lot of people who don't have that uh, temperament or quality. And even Jenna Russell does annoy me to Elizabeth. It just, everybody, and, and it, maybe it's the English accent, and it's like watching Wicked in English or Hamilton in English. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but, and it, I mean, this makes more sense. I mean, it makes as much sense as Wicked because, you know, it's a, a mythical world, so who cares? Yeah. But I don't know. Everybody, so, everybody sounds exactly the same of, you know, when you go, when you find it, but you've got to try and get out of the woods. And they yes. all slightly talk and they all slightly sing. And then and again, then and again, just uh, Jenna Russell will hit a great note. <laughs> and it's like begrudgingly. She's like, okay. <laughs> no. She Is would gladly, okay? yeah, she would gladly just go, what am I doing here? I'm in the wrong story. But she has <laughs> to go, sorry. And so it's, it's very weird and stilted. It's not the worst we've seen. I mean, in this production, in this series of episodes, I, prob I think the probable absolute worst is Sophie Thompson in the Donmar production of uh, Company, where she does Getting Married Today, and it is just the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> she just cannot, she just talks. And it's insane that they let it on a stage and that this was an acclaimed... Anyway, this isn't that bad. But either Hannah, Hannah Waddingham, who is so excellent when they finally just let her sing, does this thing in so many of the songs where she's doing like a high pitch. And I know she's a witch. <sighs> let's go, let's go through more generally. Because mm -hmm. um, this was an immensely, immensely well-received production. It, it won the Olivier Award for Best Musical Revival. Um, I'll tell you now. There was one nomination for performance. Who do you think it was? It wasn't Hadden Hannah Waddington. It doesn't say that here, but I want to double check because it, this seems because this seems fraudulent. Because <laughs> she was so good. Olivier Awards, twenty ten. Let's have a look. Um, Waltz with Bashir. That's a film. These are the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I typed in. Um, okay, so it, then it must be the year after, because it's doing the thing where it does it the year after. Okay, here we are. So it, it wins Best Musical Revival, um, nominated against uh, Passion at the Don Mar Warehouse, uh, which, another another song there, and Sweet Charity at the Theatre Royal Haymarket. Oh. Uh, best, let me see if this is correct. Best Supporting Role in a Musical. Okay, wait. Oh, yes, wait, so they she do. Wasn't, she they wasn't do. even nominated. Yeah, That's very get, I, this is true. Yes, she wasn't even nominated. And they do a sexless, um, genderless rather, uh, best supporting role in a musical. Oh, um, I've just seen who it is and I hate it. So. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Michael but, Xavier? No. Do you not like Michael Xavier? I like him, but I didn't. I can't say I particularly enjoyed him in the in this production. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, I saw Michael I mean... Xavier in Sunset Boulevard at the Coliseum, and he was excellent. He was a wonderful, wonderful Joe Gillis. Um, his, whole, his whole performance in this production was hip thrusts. Hip oh, thrusts. Yes. It was that was it. I remember in um, Hello, Little Girl. Where he's just like thrusting in her face, and I'm just yeah. like, oh my god, stop! And this is another thing where it's like it's kind of too on the nose. I'm like, okay, yeah. okay, bring it in a little bit. It's kind of on the it's on the nose, but it's also making a completely different point that I don't know if it makes sense anymore because we go back to one of the other changes that they do, which is that the that Little Red Riding Hood is now played by um, Beverly Rudd, who's just a full grown woman. Yes, and they like try to age her down with the costume, but it doesn't work. So it's like, and it's a slightly infantile performance, but also not really. Yeah, and she's very sexual in that song too. Like, yeah. she's kind of like on board with it, and I'm like, I don't agree with this. Yeah. So then it feels a bit like a date rape song if it's about like um, if it's about like rape between uh, adults, but then yeah. that doesn't make much sense either. Um, <laughs> well, because then you have to have her song after where she's talking mm. about how she's 
learn things about men and then it's just like okay through that, you just learn, did you just that, learn that men are yeah. shitheads yeah. did you not know that but oh, through God. that she's also kind of playing it as still a bit um horned yeah. up a little bit she's like you know oh, yes Ooh. exactly so it, it, it's it's all very befuddled somebody was like okay what if we have beverly rudd as not red riding Hood? i don't know where the uh line of thinking went but you know let's start as julie once told us let's start at the very beginning oh um echoes of an argument uh and uh, that was in the in the uh Amateur dramatic production I saw where I thought, oh God, because <laughs> like, they had the same thing. And I thought, oh, 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 oh <laughs> no. Uh, it, yes, so echoes of an argument. Again, are they needed? I think we kind of get it. Yeah. Is a child run away? <laughs> I think they could have just done him running away. They didn't need the that. They I just... hate you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that's when I was like, oh, I don't know about this kid. Um, but then, I mean, he redeems himself, but still, I don't, I didn't like that change. No. Um, but then he starts playing with his toys and he starts mm-hmm. telling the story and it is now <gasps> once upon a time and it's back to what we know. And it is, it's a very energetic start and, um, it's not as perhaps stilted as some might call the original production. I disagree, but it, you know, it, it, everybody's rushing on and the child's playing, but immediately the narrator thing doesn't make any sense. Why would a child do a story about a childless baker and his wife? You know, okay, Jack and the Giant, sure, that sounds exciting. A witches, sure, that sounds exciting. Little Red Riding Hood. And a childless baker and his wife. <laughs> do you want to say hi to Jazz if you want to pause? Oh, I would love to say hi to Jazz. Jazz, uh, you've got five minutes now of railing into the, into the woods. <laughs> um, It sucks. It's too fucking long. The little girl, why are you going into the woods for? Hmm? Little Red, <laughs> why are you going into the woods? What she is the one happened? with the most reasons. She says so many times her reasons. She's going to see her granny. Time for Gary, maybe, maybe. Also, the baker's wife, what a whore. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Scandal! Scandal! But also, funny story, I actually played the baker's wife. Did you? Yeah, I was in a production of Into the Woods and I was the baker's wife. Did you do the junior production or were you in a real production? Oh, the junior production. Okay. So, so you wait, didn't did even get... So you did... No. <laughs> no. Do you know what the junior production is, Hannah? What? They cut the second act. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just the first half. I hate that. Yeah. We had to, That's like, that misses the whole point. We had to so, condense it into like 45 minutes. So when you so then when you watch the original production, uh, jazz, which uh, was a situation I think where I came in and found you, you and Leanne watching it, and was like, "Why I why was I not informed?" Uh, <laughs> and then I came back in with a shawl and said, "I'm ready." No, um, <laughs> the, uh, were you suddenly amazed? Is this like the episode of Friends where Phoebe never was allowed to watch Lassie as a kid? And so then she finally yeah. watches it, and it's like, why did why did she have an extramarital affair? Why did she get killed? <laughs> God, it kind of was. It's like an existential crisis. Good mm. lord. Right. Well, I'll leave you to your podcasting. Yeah, we'll leave Thanks us to a happy, happy, happy into the woodsing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye. I'll see you for Bridget Thank on you. Friday. Bye. Oh yeah, I need to watch that. Yeah, Bye. <laughs> I do too. There we go. There's a <laughs> there's a plug for an episode that will be coming out. Um. The Christmas after, anyway. Um, the prologue. Um, yeah. yes. Why would a child uh, do a story about a childless baker and his wife? The the design of the show is somewhat modern, but also somewhat archaic. Uh, mm. They want to do modern stuff sometimes, but don't. It, I think the problem is critically, everything can be brushed away by saying. Well, it's a child, and it's what a child thinks is cool. Yes, it's a bit like any show that's a dream or anything, and so you can you can't talk to somebody who likes the show without them going. Well, actually, it's a dream. Well, can we talk about the worst part, which was the giant? Did you did like you it? Think that, did you think, I didn't think it was the worst part. I I was like I immediately taken out of the story immediately immediately taken out. Like, what was that? 
could they not have done more? I didn't think it was that bad. Are, are we throwing chronology away? I didn't realize we okay, were throwing. Well, let's go back. Let's go. Let's go chronology. We'll, Chron we'll get back. We'll get to Judy the Giant. <laughs> Judy the Great Giant. Um, specifically, my biggest issue with the with the modern stuff is um, Cinderella uh, with her earphones, with her Beats headphones, and a bullet through her nose. I don't know. She looks a little bad, if you know what I mean. That's how they rebrand the show. Their Cinderella is a bad Cinderella. I think you know it, as does it. That's exactly how they designed that the new bad Cinderella, isn't it? And do you think Lloyd Webber was just watching this version and he was like, oh, "I have an idea." I yeah. No, he was too busy. As we just found out from the Olivier nominations, he was too busy trying to make Love Never Dies work and failing. I don't <laughs> think he saw anything else on that year. Back when, back when Lloyd Webber would make a show, it would fail, and then he would leave it instead of changing its name, alienating his entire cast and crew. Uh, and then recasting the lead as a skinny woman instead of the plus-size woman that was there before, and then rebranding the show to make it not about her appearance. Oh, what a train wreck. Yeah, I know. Terrible. Back, get back to Stephen Ward, Andrew Lauder. I get back to <laughs> uncontroversial subject. But, um, no, the rest of the prologue. Yeah, what what do you think about the design? I, I'm I because it does I, have a lot of things that I don't like of of the whole a bit, little bit modern here. Here's this. Here's this. Oh, I think this is Regent's Park's problem though, because I I oh, have never Eta. Jesus. No, well, I've never liked their sets very hmm. much. I don't know who the hell their set designer is, but it is, they're not, I don't know what they're doing. They're trying too hard to reinvent things. Like we saw Legally Blonde there this summer mm. and they decorated the whole stage in like, it looked like straw, but it was meant to be blonde dreads. <laughs> I think because obviously Courtney Bowman was playing Elle and they were like, okay, we have a black Elle, so we need to make it about that. And the set was so ugly. And I just I, I don't know what they're doing. I don't I don't Maybe like it wasn't it. intentional and it was some leftover Rapunzel hair that maybe it wasn't intentional <laughs> yeah. and it was just a I don't hair know. strewn. So I didn't I didn't hate this set because I mean I like like it was like skeletal and you could see the trees coming through. Mm. It's very into the woods. Yes. But um yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What did you think? <laughs> I think it was an intentional staging outside, mm -hmm. whereas I think a lot of times with Regent's Park, they try to make outside feel natural mm -hmm. instead of choosing more shows set outside or predominantly outside. Uh, or uh, Why, like, maybe they don't want to be labelled as the Sondheim people, but why not do a little night music whose second act is mostly also in the woods? <laughs> yeah. That would be so good. Why not, you know, like look at the stuff that, you know, 101 Dalmatians. Okay. They're doing Le Cage à Fol, a, a show set entirely inside a French nightclub. I want to watch it. I hope I can <laughs> see it. I love Le Cage à Fol. But that's no, you know, <laughs> what's the point? I, uh, uh, whereas it is a great setting, uh, yeah. but this is undeniably um, the best use of um, of that that setting thus far. Uh, when we come back, we will uh, talk about the rest of our characters, specifically Jack. And we're back. Okay, uh, let's talk about Yorkshire Jack and his mother. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Yorkshire accents. I I, I have no doubt that they that these are Yorkshire people. It just annoys me every time. I just often to get the money is it drives it's like nails on chalkboard to me. I did not like this, Jack. I think um, I think they again, this is the same problem I had with Little Red. Why is he old? Like I know that yeah. I've seen some productions where they've cast like like an older teenager and fine i get that but this man was like in his mid-20s like come on now 
because they tried to hair because... was so obnoxious oh my god <laughs> you, do you hate red hair i like gingers i'm not against a ginger but this was like i could see i could see the red hair burning from like this film yeah. version it was like a little it's like a little flame yeah. across the stage maybe that's what the the final you know i think i see a glimmer no, it's, it's just jack over there yeah. the um i jack's a tough character i and little red riding hood's a tough character i i often say the hardest role in in theaters funnily enough bring it back up is is l in legally mm-hmm. blonde because it is because you have to a, of course, be musically incredibly competent. <laughs> yes. But also, you've got to be likable, but annoying, but not, but theatrically annoying and not actually, actually annoying. And then, but you've also got to be romantic and you've got to be sexy, but you've also got to, you know, it, 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 it's, it is the hardest role there is. Mm-hmm. But I also, but I think Little Red and Jack are also similarly difficult, especially Little Red. And I think this production falls on the wrong side, unfortunately for me. I think Daniel Erland in the original production is 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 phenomenal because mm. she doesn't play it annoying at all. Really, she just yeah. she doesn't play it up at all. And there are people who, who are like, well, she's supposed to be annoying. I like that. Yes, sure. That's an easy way to cop out your performance. But she's not supposed to be actually annoying. No, she's annoying in the sense that she's like a teenage girl. Mm. And like people just find them existing annoying. And I think that you can you can play a teenage girl and that be annoying in itself. You don't mm. need to play it up any more than the character is written. And um yeah, and this again. Why is it a grown woman? I just don't get it. That I just don't get that choice. Why cast a child as the narrator and then <clears throat> have no children play the children in the stories? I, I'm sure there's an ease. I'm sure somebody is. I'm sure they had the conversation and were like, "Hmm, no, he he wouldn't. He would. He, he sees little Red as his fun aunt. That's why. Because when they make the family at the end." That's his dad. And so in his in his mind, Little Red Riding Hood, he's probably his fun auntie or some bullshit. Why but not that... his fucking sister? I'm sorry. Anyway. Yeah, that makes sense. God. <laughs> Back to Jack. Um, well, I don't know what else to say. Get the <laughs> money. Yeah, I think his mother's good, but it's all just this, this twee Yorkshire. Oh, we're all so very Yorkshire. I don't write. I'm going to talk about a production. Um, no, I'll, I'm, I've got a cup of tea. My dad was offering me a beer. Um, the the first time that's ever happened of me rejecting <laughs> alcohol for a cup of tea. Now, um, you were in a production, which was very, very good, called Somewhere in England. And um, I won't name check anybody, but there was a specific scene. And your director, my teacher, I think we've name checked it before, Stephen, has said before that he loves regional accents. Mm-hmm. And there was a specific scene that ended up with five people. And I've always said it was like the United Nations because everybody had a different voice. I know exactly what scene you're talking <laughs> about. Scottish, Yorkshire, um, you know, if, if Midlands. And that's kind of what this ends up at, at points of, sure, the woods are everywhere. Sure, the woods are, you know. But they're all in the same woods, so why do they all sound different? I'm sorry. And, and uh, you know, the... And, the little red riding hood and her mother is that Newcastle? Am I hearing that right? Are they supposed to be Newcastle Eve? I don't, I could not tell you. You are asking the wrong person. Oh well, yeah, you're South African. Yes, yes, I am. Yes, yes, I am. Um, yeah, do, yeah. Who would you? Who would be an ideal South African in Into the Woods? <laughs> I don't know. It's the worst question not... I've ever asked on this show. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the character I want to play, the witch. <laughs> you oh, know? yeah, that's well. That is the best. I can. I can just imagine it now. Oh, uh, I would pay me to as see the that. witch. You would pay yes. to see yourself as the witch. Yes, I would pay to see myself <laughs> as the witch. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I did like the milky white though. I I like that yes. puppet a lot. Yes, the puppet. The puppetry was great. Mm-hmm. So there we go. Jack's redeeming trait is not Jack. It's milky white. It's his milk. It's his cow. Um, the and also again, he's playing. He is playing it completely as a child, but they've cast an older person, so it is unnerving when yeah. he's playing with Milky White at the beginning. 
it's scary. You think this guy's <laughs> going to kill somebody, grow up to kill somebody, you know. But then when he gets with the harp in the second act, that was so sexual. And I was like, okay, this is and, a big U-turn. And then, and then uh, him and Little Red, like, officially getting together at the end. And it's like, oh, I'm not rooting. I am not rooting for these two at all. <laughs> no. Um, I've put here that the, chore- the choreography is super fragilistic. <laughs> it's all very oh, to go to the festival to buy to heed to catch to, you know it's it's very literal, and uh, it, that that also annoys me. But uh, that's, I'm sure that works for some people. Um, I've put here the child is no good and plows through all the jokes, and this was the exact same thing with the child I saw, except that was an amateur dramatic production, not a theatrical, not a West End premiere production, not an <laughs> Olivier Award winning production. Yeah. You know what always annoys me, and it annoyed me, you know, with with the one I saw, is him ploughing through. Um, his father had died in a baking accident for no apparent, you know, at least it, what he believed, and he just ploughs through it, whereas Tom Aldridge at the original production goes, his father had died in a baking accident. And he shrugs and he looks at the audience and goes, yeah, this is what we're dealing with. And it's, you know, it's just winking enough. But this child, I, I, you, there is no joke I cannot speed through. Um you know what I do like? So Hannah Wanigan is great here. Um, mm-hmm. And as much as I lamented, ironically, which is lament, uh, her t- screaming and shouting through stuff, I don't mind her screaming and shouting through the witch's rap because it it works in a sense because she's more, she's a more grotesque witch vocally than we usually get. Uh, the witches are always, of course, the design and the, the makeup and the, um, the uh, transformation. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're never usually vocally grotesque or vocally witchy. Um, Bernadette does a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, that's a house. But I just but, think I just think that's Bernadette being Bernadette. Yeah. <laughs> she is having the ball. I mean, listening to uh, here's a real quote. I'll 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 say this. I'll have already said this in one of the um, in one of the uh, Into the Woods episodes before. But here's. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I've never played a witch before. There are no limits on what a witch can do. <laughs> She's not wrong. She's no. not wrong. In the same interview, she goes, in 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 so previously with Steve and I, I played um George Surratt's mistress, which was very different. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Witch? George Surratt's mistress. Which yeah. is good. I Sunday in the Park with George is very, very oh, good. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Sunday, the song Sunday. Oh, mm gets me anyway carry on as much as we can't look that maybe that is peak bernadette um flinging through a line um <laughs> is is um is we do not belong together oh god i have nothing to say anyway uh where are we uh oh yes and i'm money uh, yeah uh so the kids toys so he's got a spider-man lunchbox and he's got davy jones from parts of the caribbean as the witch <laughs> it's just rude <laughs> <laughs> but but not incorrect because the prosthetics in the show yeah. kind of give that look. But so it's like, is this a choice? I mean, obviously it's a choice. They're the modern fairy tales, but that's but you're shooting yourself in the foot. This kid would not be playing about a childless, struggling marriage <laughs> if he had a Spider-Man lunchbox. You know, when he played at a Davy Jones toy, that's another thing that annoys me. But anyway. Uh, also, how many toys does he have? Twenty. A cast of twenty. So many. No food, but toys. <laughs> no food, and he only. But when it comes to, <laughs> but he loves multi rolling. So he, he only has one toy for his wolf, and then he's like rips the hair out of it. He's like, hey, you can be the prince. Um, okay. Let's talk about. Oh no! First, we're going to meet the mysterious man who is here as a smoking like granddad again he's clearly supposed to be the granddad maybe but he's just a smoking older gent who is <laughs> I, I just don't get it and that is something that they get rid of for the central power production because they recast uh chip zion who was the original baker to now be the mysterious man so it's very touching and nice but they just have him in almost the exact same costume of the original mysterious man on broadway you know the withering old running away let's do it uh, when are you first meet me? But here it's just some <laughs> old guy. When you first meet me, <laughs> I remember watching that and being like, 
like not really having any context for it and being like, what the hell? What is this character? Why is he here? Because they're doing the whole, you know, cigarette and suit thing. And obviously, I mean, obviously on my end, I can't look at that and not think of Rod Serling Twilight Zone. But they don't have any of the mystery of that or the enigma of, you know, the cigarette when you first meet me or any any. He just looks like a granddad. And again, I guess that makes sense because it could technically be his dad giving advice after the wife dying, but it just doesn't make any sense. No. Um, no. Uh, then here we are. Uh, hello, uh, Michael Xavier as a Cockney wolf um, doing hello, little girl, but it's all Cockney. So he goes, hello, little, little girl, <laughs> little girl. <laughs> <laughs> little girl. Hello, little girl. Nice and plump. And it's it, Michael Xavier is an incredible performer, but it is just so unnerving and unsettling. And that's the point. But also yeah. not enjoyable in any way. And yeah. there's not the fun of the song. Because you're supposed to... The whole point of the song and the whole point of the metaphor is that... Let's just say it is. Some pedophiles use charm. Yeah. And, you know... Some See, pedophiles. I would not follow him off the path. No. If he keeps <laughs> thrusting at me like that, I'm going to be like, okay, leave mm -hmm. me alone. It's like the, how the child catcher doesn't actually make sense in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, because as much as he's got sweets, he's also, hello, sweeties. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a monster. <laughs> I love Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, but that's beside the point. But here, it, they're going for like, a, I guess, a, a Jack the Ripper vibe. Maybe it's just the Cockney voice. But you know, he's all sexy, and you know, he's got his big leather jacket. <laughs> it's like, all right, okay, hello, little girl. And it's like, okay, this is the choice you've made. But as we've talked about before, it doesn't make any sense. She's a grown woman. Um, not that grown women can't be attacked, but would they be doing it in a childlike way? Red, if Little Red was younger, like if she was a child, maybe it would make more sense. But it's just... It doesn't make any sense as you a know character. What it feels like it feels a bit like. I mean, the most recent example is is people finding Dharma sexy, and it's like, yeah, let's make the wolf sexy. We've never had a sexy wolf before. Have it? <laughs> it's like people. It's like in the in the in the rehearsal room. Somebody said, "You know who I always used to have a crush on." Is Robert Westerberg as the wolf in the original <laughs> Into the Woods? Like, I know, I, I, I know, I know that's weird. And they were like, yeah, let's run with that Michael sexy. Let's make him be a company. Oh, yeah, you know, you know. I mean, it works vocally because then, as his prince, he has this posh, you know, moment every time he says moment. You know, it's very good. Do you prefer him as the prince to the wolf? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I, yes. What do you think got him his, his Olivier nomination? <laughs> I could not tell you. I I could not tell you. I, I just, I think maybe the hip thrusting. Maybe that's it. The Olivier audience yeah. was like, yes. I want to see I want to see more of that, please. Uh so this production has Our Little World, which is a song that was added um around the 80s. Uh, mm -hmm. that's a lie around the 90s, um, because uh, Sondheim noticed that there was never a moment of showing, like, well, he calls it, like, good parenting. Like, there, there wasn't a scene of happiness between uh, Rapunzel and the witch. But I wouldn't really say that this is one. This is a scene of just, like, this is, this is the life. Yeah, I this agree. Is... I also don't think, should there be a moment of good parenting? No, is it an exceptional song? It's all right. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I think yeah. you get all of it with. I get. I think you again. You get more than enough in their relationship. With stay with me. Yeah, I think that one. That one shows like that one shows arguably not good parenting, but like more their love. dynamic. Yeah, and like like I I highlighted some of my favorite lyrics, which is like, um. I think it's princes, princes, yes, but wolves and humans too. Mm. But she's like protecting her from the world. And I think that that's a much nicer message than what we get in whatever that fucking song was. Yeah. Uh, 
I've got I've got it here in my into the woods little book. Nice. Um, hyena tower. She said, "No, that's that's agony." Uh, there are giants in the sky. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't find it. Great, um, but uh, yeah, I I I think it's a pretty average song at best. The but then again, they t- and then we're back to the wolf and this eating of little red being like sex and them all moaning and grunting and her throwing herself up above mm-hmm. the sheets and he's like oh that doesn't even make that doesn't make any sense correct me if i'm wrong were there flower petals used as the blood yes that's very questionable i'm like <laughs> it's giving romance but it's blood like what is this <sighs> It, well, it's it's all that you know. Oh, we're all it, well. It's the giant that you hate, you know. Oh, we'll all grab a pillow. Oh, oh, and oh, we're all walking around, and I'm holding a tree because I haven't got any lines in this axe, but they're <laughs> going to give me a tree, so I feel like I'm part of the company. No, um, you know, oh, and we're all we're all part of the company. You know, I, it's always the thing. It's always like I, I, I'm going to say it's Hannah Wanigan, but I don't know if she she did an interview like this, but she probably did. Oh, no, we're all. You know, we're we're all a big company, and that's the great thing. We're sure, sure. I have five of the greatest songs ever given to a musical theatre role, but we're all a big family. I see myself as much as the same as um. I want to say <laughs> Alan. <laughs> Good you know, and they're all grabbing sticks, and it's oh, and we've all got an umbrella. Uh, but also. That doesn't make sense because if he's a child, he doesn't need to imagine. A, he can just imagine the biggest things possible. He doesn't need to imagine umbrellas as a beanstalk. <laughs> anyway, that now we're really getting into the weeds, into the woods. Yes. <laughs> um, then I think the you know what my bigger performance opinion is, and I don't know how you feel. Mm-hmm. I think Mark Hadfield as the baker is quite bad. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think musically. Okay. I don't think musically he's very good at all. And then performance-wise, there are many times like, oh, she's making all those noises in there. She could be eating or eaten. He doesn't put anything onto that line at all. He should be scared. Honestly, looking back now that we're discussing this, I'm like, maybe the only thing that I enjoyed about this production was Hannah <laughs> as the witch. <laughs> And Jenna Russell. She was fine. Oh, thank God you agree. I I because everybody loves Jenna Russell. <laughs> and I was like, this isn't this isn't exceptional. I've seen no. 10 better Baker's wives. Yes. And she's doing and... the speak singing thing. And I don't I don't know what it maybe I hate myself, but I don't like British, I don't like when people do things in British talk. I I that shouldn't that I haven't heard before and i mean this is just me being resistant to change i want everything to be the original production maybe that's why phantom is my favorite show because they haven't changed it in 40 yeah. years. um but you know it, it's like oh i'm going to talk now well i keep trying to like marry it in my head being like okay sometimes hard right and like they're outside hmm. And, like, they don't want to, like, push themselves too hard. I don't know. But They're I'm still like, mics. But I'm also, like, I don't, like, that's not an excuse. Like, don't do Sondheim if you can't do Sondheim to the max, you know? Jenna's been given a sort of, one of these, you know, I don't know how to call it, token Sondheim things where they, you know, she is a Sondheim token, you know, great performer. <laughs> Because yeah. she did the revival of Sunday in the Park where she played Dot in, uh, and again she did that English. Look at what you are, not at what you do. Look at all the things you've done for me. Opened up my eyes, and she does it all properly. It's like, eyes. Oh, just not. You're French, and I know that. <laughs> I know that Manjim is American. Anyway, anyway. Um, but she's very good as Mary in the Mary Libby Roll Along film production. I think she's very good there. She's also in digital theatre, which I'd recommend. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I think that's probably my favourite of her Sunday performances. Not this. Yeah, she's, just, she's just fine. She's she just fine. Well. You know who's better? You know who's better? Well, we'll get there later. 
Uh, the first midnight is all taught. They they truncate it a little bit. Maybe I'm wrong, but the way I heard it, they were speeding through some things and talking over other things. There was a lot of talking over each other. I, I mean, that's I mean that's kind of what it is anyway. But it, it seemed shorter to it me. Did, yes, and I felt I felt the same way about the prologue actually. And then I looked, and it was the set. It was still thirteen and a half minutes. So I thought, oh. Am I just hearing things, or maybe it's the they... singing that's getting to you? Maybe it's the, like, the speak singing. So they're just like talking oh, yeah. to you instead. So but you're like, oh. they're slow. Yeah, like well, I mean, the, oh, <laughs> and it's like in the finale when you know they have to slow down. Maybe mm -hmm. I just wasn't meant to have children, so that he can really act the line and you can really hear his tears. It's like, <sighs> no, you can do all of that by still keeping. Maybe I just wasn't meant to have children. Don't say that, of course, you were meant to have children, but how can I go about being a father with no one to mother my child? Just calm the child. You don't need. But how can I go about being a father with no one? I had to bully Garth. You never met Garth. Yeah. Garth struggles with 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 singing, and so he, he was cast as the baker for the finale, and he really struggled with the rhythm. And I went with that goddamn rhythm through for multiple nights because we're not changing it. You're not slowing it down. You're going, maybe I just wasn't meant to have children. <laughs> I had to do that for two nights. So he, Mark, Hal, Mark Alman from Soft Cell, no, Mark Hadfield can do it. Should do it. Yes. What else have we got here? I'm just going to look. Who was musical director for this production? The musical director of this production was Gareth Valentine. Let's see what else Mr. Gareth Valentine has done. Uh, his credits include well, extensive work on the West End. He's down as Miss Saigon, Cats, Camelot, two Camelots. Uh, Mary Louie rolled along at the Donmar. Um, so I wonder what was going on with this production then. I think people love to quote the Sondheim thing. Of, and Meryl does it on, on an Into the Woods film interview that I watched the other day, where she goes, well, Sandine will say he would much rather have actors who can sing than singers who can act. People love to quote that. And I'm sure he said that one time. And I'm sure he <laughs> believes it. But there is no, I just don't believe, you wouldn't write. Um, you know, you know, people talking about, you know, I mean, Jenna does it a bit in this. Of, in moments in the woods, but he wouldn't write. Um, just one, pre you know, uh, he, he wouldn't write these things so that are so beautifully musical. If he just wanted you to go, you know, <laughs> doesn't matter if you had one. Yeah, you know, I if life were made of moments, even there that would are made of that one. There are actors who can sing incredibly well. Why not cast them? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. people like, people, as I say, people just love to quote that one time he probably did say, I like it when actors could sing. Yeah, you know, and it's got like spun out of proportion. But that's, they quote that whilst ignoring the the fundamental part of that sentence, which has, which is, that can sing. <laughs> yes, I agree. The second I half. Agree. <laughs> uh, I, yes, I've put here uh, Giants in the Sky with the Umbrella Beanstalk and this kid, sorry J uh, Jack, with his hiccup breathing technique, when you're all alone you just, when you're all alone I, can't, I, can't, I keep hearing huge breaths yes again, musical director why didn't you fix this? because I think they thought it was real they were like, ooh, it's all real ooh, look at all these leaves yeah, he's climbing he needs to take a breath. <gasps> it's like, Jesus Christ. No, rein it in, man. That is, that is definitely what they said. That is definitely what they said about him climbing. <laughs> I just know it. Um, and I've put here again, the baker is musically shoddy, specifically in, in uh, It Takes Two, which is probably my favourite song in the entire show. So good. It's so and good. yet, they, this, this left me feeling nothing, really. I thought it was a pretty lacklustre... Controversial opinion. I think the movie version's better, and that's saying a lot. I think the movie version has some good bits. Um, yes, I don't like James. 
<laughs> I don't like I don't James. Like James. <laughs> that was a kind of horrendous casting decision. I would have preferred him as the wolf, I think. I think Johnny Depp. No, 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 no. I I stand by that I stand by that opinion. I think he would have been funny as the wolf. Do you we he, want the wolf to be funny? I don't know. I didn't like what Johnny Depp did with it, so No, well that's another matter. That's that's another story. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um yeah. back to the production. Back to the production. Uh, where are we here? Oh, yes. Hannah High Pitch Delivery. Hello, Hannah. No. Um, <laughs> Anna Waddingham. Again, musically grotesque, which I which I do enjoy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the flirting between Jack and Little Red. Again, they've cast older people, so they want to make it more flirty, I guess. Again, just doesn't work. These two don't have chemistry. Uh, it... <laughs> Uh, correct. Okay, in the original in the original production, did that happen? Yeah, the scenes there. But uh, do they get together at the end? I'm. I believe the line is, um, Jack goes, "I want to stay. I want to stay," and and he and he says what he says to her. But then Daniel Allen goes, "I'll be your mother now," which is very funny. Yeah. Um, not. I want a pet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do have that line in the show, in the original, oh. but not not said like a serial killer. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like the Jack and Little Red thing. I don't. No. I love the makeshift little family. I mean, that's what it's all building to. But yeah, they should be brother and sister vibes, not... <laughs> no. Not, whatever, not that whatever this is. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it unnerving. Uh, mm. The death of the mystic. Sorry. Oh, so this adds something in where I don't know. They must have got sometimes approval for it. So where they add at the end of Steps of the Palace, mm-hmm. you know, on the steps of the palace, and then in the belly of the wolf, <laughs> at the top of the beanstalk. Go, yeah. What the hell is this? Bad. <laughs> Not good. Yeah. Forty years yeah. have passed without adding those lines. Just give Cinderella her moment, okay? Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Like, they've all had their songs. Give Cinderella her song and just leave it. Yeah. It's telling that that's never shown up in any other production, I think. (laughs) Because originally they were all all these... Because they are, really, all the same song. Mm -hmm. I know things now. Things have changed. This is what I know now. They are the same song. I understand why you've done it. But they're not musically similar in any way. So, Mm-mm. you know, her her jumping in, it's like a bad... I love bad medleys. Um, <laughs> there was a Bond one on the cruise, and I, I talked to my friends who sung it. And, like, awkwardly, my friend Kirsten had to go, nobody does it better! And she had to, like, worm, the, <laughs> worm this song in. And, uh, and this is what it feels like. I know things now. So, Why? It just doesn't work musically. Um... What have we got here? Uh, the death of the mysterious man is bizarre. I don't think it works in the original show either, but here it's played like the end of an EastEnders episode. <laughs> Things are, thing, all is restored. He's dead. <laughs> oh, it comes out of like left field and you're like, oh, it's like whiplash. It, the death of the mysterious man doesn't work in the in the original production either, but here... That's but at least in the original production, it's like brushed over and it's all caught up in the witch's huge, brilliant uh, uh, transformation. But here, it's like you know, gets its own moment. Oh. Um, I, the witch transformation is obviously done. Like she runs off, and then somebody else comes on. Whereas I still don't know how they did the original production with the puff of smoke. And I mean, it's probably the same thing. It's just a costume that you rip off. But yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, okay, you get it. I've done this but, trick in Pantos. I have to bring this up just because we're talking about like trans, like transformations on stage. The best transformation I've ever seen is controversially in Diana the Musical. Oh yes, with the wedding dress. It's still incredible. I don't know how they did it. I have no idea, and it is so good. And I hate that show, but oh my god. Do you think if it finally, if I say finally? If it did get a West End revival, 
it would become a camp classic. Maybe if it was done more tastefully? No, I want it to be done less tastefully. <laughs> I want it to be done like Rocky Horror. If it was an hour and a half. Yes. I think if it was an... But then, no, but it doesn't make any... No, we can't do this because it's about a real person. This is the problem. It's, yeah, it couldn't be funny. She's so, like, precious to our culture that I don't think we could. It'd be like, I described when I showed my ex Evita for the first time and, was, and she was like, who's Evita? And I was like, she was like Diana. And when they first had productions of Jesus Christ Superstar, they burnt down theatres. And so, like, Andrew was like, I want to make, um, in, in Argentina, they burnt down theatres. And he was like, my next show is about your queen, your, your Evita Peron. And he was like, I'm going to do a Latino. Uh, you know, um, I can imagine that would be the reaction if they brought Diana. Um, uh, it's never going to happen, but that show is, it's got, like, a weird special place in my heart. Mm. I don't know why it's not. I good. still, I still can't believe, you know, want to rock like Freddie or whatever. Uh, oh, that's a great, that's a great song. It doesn't have enough camp to it to be enjoyable, and also it's about a real life death. It's like, yeah, I mean, there's like too many sad moments, and the ending is so bad that yeah. like it's just like no. Anyway, back to Into the Woods. Back to the woods. But Diana uh, has a great transformation. Diana does have a great transformation. My next note about Into the Woods is that the James Hewitt song is phenomenal, though. Yeah? Is, is that it? Is that your only comment? <laughs> that was my and, and Diana reference. Um, yes. Uh, I like the What's the Time Mr. Wolf staging of Ever After. I think that's very good, very cute. Oh, yes, he's a child. Okay, What's the Time Mr. Wolf? I get it. Uh, but even beyond that, it's just a fun stage. Mm -hmm. Who is the attractive woman dressed as Rocky from Rocky Horror in gold speedos and a gold crop top in Ever After? I don't. I is she no supposed idea. to be one of the sisters? But the sisters are blind. But like, again, the sisters I hated in this production too. I don't. Yeah, they're all anyway. wearing they're all wearing hunting jackets. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, again, I think that's like the issue with not placing it within a time period or like they, they're just like oh the you know, 1980s you know, it would be fun if somebody was wearing gold on stage oh again it's like oh he's a kid so he's probably seen somebody wearing that or whatever <laughs> why is this kid seen rocky horror please <laughs> i can't i was you know, i i would have been i was very young when i first saw it and i, I thought a shadow cast of it on Thursday. I just did a performance of it. I wish I could have seen it. I it love. I love. I, I bet it was. Who did you play? I was. I was in the ensemble. No big. That's role. fine. That's but fine. um. But fun fact. Um. Literally, everybody was making out and getting naked on stage. So, as well fully. I yeah yeah. Oh my. The girl who played Janet was very drunk and um yeah. Oh my! The girl who played <laughs> Janet was very drunk. Susan Sarandon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we managed to get Susan on. Oh, anyway, right. back to anyway. the show. Oh, anyway, God. that's another story. Um, yeah. uh, nightmare. I like that the second act is a nightmare now, and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. It kind of masks the stupidity of having the kid die as the narrator, and then the whole show continue. It is like a weird fever dream nightmare that makes sense. I get it. Yeah. Well, when I saw him like being fed to the giant, <laughs> mm. obviously I'd only seen the movie, so I was yeah. like, "I was like, what? They killed the narrator?" What's and happened? again, that works as a sort of meta thing with the suit, the suited narrator, and it's quite. And again, it's very funny. Some of us don't like the way you're telling it, and yeah. you know, <laughs> Benedict really eats that line up, and, and you know, it's it's just a great. It's it's very funny. Um, but here it's like horrifying, and so you've yeah, still got all the funny. Child. Yeah, you've still got the funny lines, but it's you kind know. of horrific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rapunzel drinking a bottle of gin. Okay, all right. You know, again, it's so it's Rapunzel. I, I, Rapunzel. Yeah. It's in the whole show. I've never. I've always found she's like an afterthought. Um, it is weird that she doesn't have a song. I think it's weird she doesn't have a song because if she if he did write a song, it would just be Grief and Chill Limit Bird again. 
Oh yes. Wait, now I want to see a production of it with Green Finch and Little Green Finch and Little Oh, I don't want to watch it a little bit. Um, the it is just the same character. Yes, she's stuck <laughs> in a tower and she can't get out until a man comes and rescues her. Yeah. Well, Anthony, how quickly do you think Joanna gets rid of Anthony? Oh, immediately. <laughs> once, once they get out of London, immediately. She pushes him off the she's boat. Like, she's like, "Oh, you are not my my prince." Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, um, uh, Judy Dench is the giant. Uh, it's fun. I like Judy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I like a cameo. I like a cameo of Judy anywhere. So anyway, yeah, apart from Cats, <laughs> that movie still gives me nightmares to this day. In many ways, I'm a trans Deuteronomy. <laughs> Do you remember that interview? <laughs> because <laughs> the... <laughs> incredible. <laughs> It's like Jason Derulo. Why are you in that? Why is Taylor Swift in that? Why is Rebel Wilson in that? She's hitting. He's hitting a lot of those high notes. If you know what I mean, he's really oh. hitting a lot of those. Stop. Stop <laughs> it. No. Uh, remember, a cat is not a dog. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, one of the changes in James Lapine's book, which I like a lot, uh, you know. Uh, you killed the wolf. A wolf's not the same. Ask a wolf's mother. Great <laughs> line. Um, uh, wonderful. The zipping up after moments in the woods. Again, just great gag. Very funny. They play up the sex. You know, and then, uh, will you come, will you, will you meet me again in the woods? Oh, God. Uh, you know, yeah. playing up the comedy of that's very funny. Um, yes. But, again, is that, is it just playing the obviousness of a joke that is already in the script with Robert Westerberg going, you know, will we meet again? Do you think this was just a moment in the woods? You know, yeah. is it, is it, the joke's already there. Do we need him to, you know, I don't know. I'm I like sniffling. it. I thought it was funny. I, know, I, 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 think, I think it's funny too. It, I'm it, not it against a quick gag, a sex joke. I, I think it was funny. Yeah. Um, the and then in we haven't really talked about Hannah Waddingham as much as we should. And I think yes. it's because she's until she transforms, her second act is enough is is enough to be groundbreaking forever. Yes. But her first act, I could give well no, apart from stay with me. Um is like okay, sure, but like once we get to last midnight, once we get to children will listen and, and it she's it's phenomenal. Children will listen. That again, I cried. I think I cried multiple times in this production because of her and only her. Mm. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. I'd agree. Uh, we're going to take one last break and then we're going to talk about Hannah Waddingham some more. <laughs> Hannah, you just had a two minute break whilst I uh, went to urinate. And how did you spend it? I watched uh, Your Fault Last Midnight with Hannah Waddingham again because I just wanted to see her. I just wanted to see her do it again. It's so good. She's superb. She, even Bernadette near the end, just starts shouting out the lines because musically <laughs> it's 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 very very difficult. But yes. Miss Waddingham does not. Miss Waddingham does not. When are we getting a neck? Obviously, she's sucked up in the Ted Lasso bubble, mm -hmm. and so they can't just but get her in a goddamn big West End production again soon, please. What what do you want to see her in? I I can't think of like. Mm, so she was in she was in a little night music and she apparently she was excellent and I would love to see that but we're not going to get that. Um, mm -hmm. Let's let's say Sonnak. Let's be for for the for, for the sake of the series. She's done a little night music, so they're not going to just do that again. Fortunately, mm -hmm. I'm always down for a Follies revival. I think she'd be a better Phyllis than a good than a Sally. Sure. She's got more brass. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Love it. I was just about to say that. I think she would be excellent. Yeah. She's got I the think... comedy. She's got she's got the pain. Oh. Well, my it. favorite Mrs. Lover is obviously Angela. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Angela. But I um, think but... Hannah could do a, a very good job. 
Oh, I would pay. So my favorite much. is my favorite is most certainly in Elvis Darton. Have you never listened to the twenty twelve recording? No. Oh, it's the best thing. I'm, that's I'm missing ever. out, am I? I'm, I need to send you now. Uh, the Sondheim song canon. And in that, you will hear our favourite in Elders. Um, it, I, I mean, she's just sublime. I'm sending you in now, don't you? The ultimate Sondheim song canon. And, Sorry, did uh, you say it was the 2012 version? Yes, the 2012 version, which I the saw. Last, with Michael Ball. With Michael Ball, who is sublime. Uh, I'm now sending you the official Carruthers Legator and whoever Sondheim song canon, which will be updated uh, next week. Wednesday with our Into the Woods rankings. Uh, so you'll have to check up on those. But um, yeah, so that's in order. So currently we have a little priest as our very top. And I think it will remain that way because mm -hmm. whether it is the best song or not, it feels fitting and nice. Ooh, you got some good ones on here. I know. It's the best, it's the best playlist ever. Um, it is a good playlist. Uh the yeah, the She's 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 terrific and she's very 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 good here. Um, what, what am, am I in a complete black hole here? Is it always Mother I'm Coming? Because I've never I've never heard that at the before. end of Last Midnight. Yeah. Yes, I. Yes, because when I sang it, at least maybe I was singing this version. Um, but yeah, Mother I'm Coming. Ah, yeah. No, that's new. I knew, yeah, because I, I listen to the original more than I do the new ones. And the gloom, and the doom, and the boom. And then she goes, crunch! But, oh, so you never had the mother I'm coming bit? Yeah, who's her mother? Well, I think she's talking about, so the beans, right? Yeah. Those are, those are from her garden. Mm. And pres I... I don't know if they talk about it being like a family thing and she's like part of the reason she curses the baker is because it was like he stole like a family heirloom. So she's talking about like losing her beans. Yeah. And obviously the show the whole show is about losing the beans. Everybody's losing the beans all the time. And the whole show is about family. Do we need another literal <laughs> family thing? Do we need her to scream, Mother, I'm coming? Oh, oh. I've I've got it. I've got it. Genius Lyrics is here with me. Go. The witch is reinvoking the curse her mother bestowed upon her the first time she lost the beans. So obviously, oh yes, when she goes, give me the hunch, give me the claws. Yes. Yeah, so because like she's ugly in like the first bit because she lost the beans. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Wait uh, a minute, though. I chopped down the bean stuff. Right. That's clear. But without any bean stuff, there was queer. Uh. Your fault. The yeah, no, she's she's terrific. Uh, I've got here. Um, yes, wonderful when she's priming her head at the start of your. Yes, fault. and your fault. They're all like assaulting Jack, and she's like mm -hmm. in the background. I look wonderful. <laughs> and I hate I, that wig, though. I hate that wig. I it's don't. Not like a, it. It's not a very flattering. It's not a very flattering costume. It's not a very <laughs> flattering. Like the whole. The whole point of the, you know, the witch's transformation. I mean, Bernadette again really melts it when she becomes this fabulous. And she's got this pink number on, and she's just like, mm, "Look at me!" <laughs> and um, and they've got they've put her in this big coat. Yeah, it's like green velvet. Like I don't hate the dress. I just think the hair is wrong and the makeup is wrong. Like when I was watching this, and she does the boom. Her like yeah. the way her face like contorts. It's like a little mm. black hole like in the middle of her face. I was like, mm. I don't like it. But Hannah is great. Hannah is great. Yeah. Um, I don't, however, like in this production because it's more realistic and Hannah's performance is more realistic and more furious. I don't like the jaunty beam music that they keep. Have another beam, dilly. <laughs> Have another beam, dilly. <laughs> and that kind of works a bit of that because she's playing it more campy, I guess. And you know, hey, you want a beam, do, but not. I, I, mother, please let me give me yeah. everything. I mean, you want a bead? You want another yeah. bead? Did he? <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. I suppose they can't change that if it's in the music, though, right? No, they can't. But I mean, maybe how they did they change? Yeah, because they got a permission, like presumably, to change other things. So, but well, they've cut. They have cut over time the terrible computer synth drum 
that on the original production was underneath the witch's rap of boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Stay okay, all right. Steve found a computer, 1989. <laughs> <laughs> Boys with their toys, you know. Oh, good lord. Um, that's actually it. Well, no, I have then, I've put here then Baker and narrator reveal. Um, so the reveal, you know, and he comes through and he's he, now he's his dad and it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, do you need, do you need, I know I'm going back on what I've already said, but do you need the kid to say, I, I, I miss her? And then the dad to say, I, I miss her too. I miss her too. Do you need do you need that line? Do you need do you need it? Do you just put it in? Because it's not like you've been subtle throughout. I don't know why. I again, I like I know that you were, we were talking about this being a more realistic production, but like mm. it's camp, it's sondime, it's like I don't think you need to add all this extra storyline. It's already mm. confusing enough. I did I didn't like it. I mean, I yeah. I didn't like I it. I thought you did like it. I like I no no no. I I like the idea of the kid like telling. Oh this right, but you don't but actually like the reason it's a kid. Yeah. Okay. All right. I kind of okay. wish they just done it that he was a kid and then just left it at that. Mm. Like I didn't need this extra backstory for the narrator. Why do we have to make the narrator not just be a narrator? I saw a production that was on YouTube that somebody had uploaded from a, an opera house in, in America. And the set was this wonderful stately mansion-like thing. And it opened up with a janitor walking on sweeping. And I thought, oh, please don't be the narrator. Please don't be the narrator. And he was sweeping. And then he found a book. And he opened oh. the book. And he went, once upon a time. Oh, I thought, God. what the hell is that? Why, why does the narrator have to be a janitor sweeping a stately mansion? Why can he not just be a narrator? I just know what happened in the director's head, like during table work. He was like, there needs to be a reason for why this narrator is narrating. So they're like, oh, okay, let's build this entire backstory for this character. But in like the narrator is just the narrator. He's just telling yeah. the story. You don't need to have or a story. He's, or he's James Corden. <laughs> I hate that movie so much. <laughs> uh, um, this production was tremendously successful and uh, was uh, transferred to the uh, Central Park uh, Theatre. Uh, and here are my hot takes. Amy Adams is better. Amy Adams is wonderful as the baker's wife. And oh, Donna Mer- see that. You- yeah, I know. I know. She's great, and she can sing. She's wonderful. I love oh, Amy Adams. Yes. <laughs> um, and also Donna Murphy was the witch, which I found very interesting, because this is 2012, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tangled is 2013 or 2011? I want to say 2011. 2010. So she has already played Mother Gothel, and she's now going to just basically play her again. Yeah, and you know what? I don't have a problem with that. Neither did I. She was excellent. Uh, yeah. Chip Zion was great and touching as the mysterious man. And uh, Dennis O'Hare is cast as the baker. Kind of miscast. Not really vocally. Again, he can do mm-hmm. uh, assassins and he sort of talks through uh, the Ballad of Gateau. You know, I am going to the Lord. <laughs> I but- hate that casting decision. Yeah, it's so weird, and especially with Amy Adams. Why are they casting these old? I mean, I'm oh, not well, saying I, I, I don't know how old he is. How old is he? He's not young. He's a wrinkled old man. He's sixty, and Amy <laughs> Adams. So he would have been like fifty back then, right? And Amy Adams is forty-eight, so it's not too. But she looks young. She, she looks younger, and he looks older. Yeah. I want to know how how old um, Mark Hadfield is. Nineteen fifty nine. It was rather, darling. It was rather. And Jenna Russell is younger again. Sixty seven. Yeah. Just cast. I think what it is about casting them so drastically differently 
in ages. I don't know why it's taken us 30 years for us to cast a real-life married couple, like with Stephanie J. Block and, what's his name, Stephen Aurelius? Why did they just... Yeah, but they're wonderful together, and they're great together, and on stage, and they're in the new... Oh, wait, that's in the new cast, isn't it? Yeah, this isn't... You know, it's Brian Darcy James and Sarah Bareilles. Sarah Bareilles. Fantastic. Fantastic Mm -hmm. casting. Uh, Sarah Bareilles, immaculate and everything. Yeah. I thought I thought she was good. I thought she was good, um, but uh, yeah, no. I, I I overall to the pardon me. The Central Park production is exactly what you'd expect. It's uh, and I, and from the and Jesse Mueller was um, Cinderella, and uh, Glenn Close was the voice of the giants. Oh my god! You know, um, Jesse Mueller went to Syracuse, which is where I am now. Ah, yeah. As our claim to fame, Jesse Mueller. Mm. Oh God, I would have. I I I love the fact that she played Cinderella. That is a mm. that's a fun casting choice. Yeah, I like her. I like her. Mm. Uh, I like Glenn Close as the giant. I love Glenn Close as the <laughs> giant. I think the giant should always be like some like really famous classic actor. Oh, well, this is the thing. So Dick Cavett, you know, was the narrator for a period in the eighties. But I can't find any information on whether or not he played the mysterious man as well. I'm guessing he didn't, and they split it like they did the role here. Then why not make it like Rocky Horror and every two weeks bring a new narrator in? I know it's gimmicky. I know it's I love it. But do it. it. But you can only do that, really, in a production like the original, where they go for the camp, where they go for making it a broad comedy. I forget how broad they play that original production until I'm watching it again and I go, oh no, they are playing it like a full-blown comedy and this is excellent. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> a bear, a bear's a sweet beside you, I've seen a bear with five foot feet. Um, anyway, oh. uh, it's wonderful. Is there anything, Hannah, that you would like left to say about the Regent's Park production of Into the Woods? Not anything about the specific production, but I would like to go through my top five songs. Oh, yes. Go for it. I did yes. say this to you, didn't I? <laughs> yes. And I thought a lot about it. And it's because it's a show with so many songs. Yes, I counted 23. I'm looking at my song ranking here and I have 23 songs. Yes. So it's it's it was difficult, but I think. Yeah, I picked based on like emotional, both emotional like attachment to the songs and camp. Um, Okay. (laughs) Yes. So we've already discussed this song. Stay With Me is my top number one. Excellent choice. Stay With Me, purely for the quote, stay a child while you can be a child. Oh, yes. I'm going to cry now. Yeah. Um, And then I love Moments in the Woods. Yeah, uh, for... you've currently got two of my top five. Yes, see, so it, it it's it, it, they're just they're too good, too good, and mm-hmm. that one for the lyric, is it always or, yeah, is it never and ah, and more important, more not more importantly, but um, let the moment go. Don't forget it for a moment though. Just remembering you've had an and when you're back to or makes the or mean more than you did than it did before. How can you write that? How can you write that? And never write, you know. So good. Um, and then okay, so you've got two of my five. Yeah, then I've got maybe their magic. Okay, Um, all right. Purely for the lyric that is, if the end is right, it justifies the beans. (laughs) Yes, it was very happy with you about that. I have no doubt. Yes, I love it. Um, uh, then I've got I know things now. Okay, um, all right. Yeah. Not from this production because I hate the way they do it in this production. <laughs> but but in general. Just in general, as a song that's been written. I think it's <laughs> it's so beautiful. And like if you don't know the context, you're kind of like, what the hell is going on? And then you know mm. the context and you're like, Wow. Mm. Wow. I don't have a quote from that one. I just wrote shit man, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty yes. Good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then my last song, I have Agony. 
um, because yeah. I've never seen it done badly. Um, yes. Yes, I, I think it's a song. It's like Stay With Me. It's difficult to get wrong if you cast the right people. Yeah. And I've seen it done multiple times. And I think the gayer it's played, the better. <laughs> yeah. Um, And I've just written Camp. Yes. So, yes, you we've, know. Got a, we've got a, a lot, many different reasons for why these songs are my favorite songs. But yeah. No, that's a good, that's a good, good top five. I, I'll I'll give you that. That's a very good top five. Um, Yeah. And you've hit, uh, you've hit three of my top five. I also, I have at four, it takes two, and I have at number one, finale. Um, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> basic, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, <laughs> Into the Woods, uh, wonderful show. Uh, you know what makes me really excited, Hannah? Is what? that I, I we were just talking about favorite songs, then, and I thought, oh, I can't wait. I'm talking about Company later, and I'm talking about Into the Woods again with Will on, on Wednesday. I could talk about these shows forever. Nobody would listen, but <laughs> I would, <laughs> unlike children, <laughs> and no one will listen. That's it, it's in my head at all times. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, I know what a life I live. Um, Anna, thank you very, very much uh, for Into the Woods. I don't know when when you're on again. I don't know. Usually I say, usually I say you're going to be on again for this episode, but then that always changes because my life changes so much. So I have to constantly rejig things. So I'm actually going to say I will never see you again. Okay, but, but then, you'll hear me. You'll hear me on Out of Bounds. Yeah. They oh are we plug are we gonna start plugging this now? Are we going okay. to <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe Ooh. oh oh no oh wait oh <clears throat> pardon me. I just I typed April instead of May into one of these and the uh OC have you seen the schedule before? Have you seen the yes, Excel? Oh. It is it gives me so much anxiety just thinking about it. Doesn't it satisfy you? No, it's so chaotic. No, but it's it, it oh. Oh, oh, and something's in gr- in yellow that should be green. Uh, it's not chaotic. It is the opposite of chaotic. It is absolute I, order. I don't know. It's just like, it's there's so much on there. There's like so much information. I don't know. I yes. never want to see it again. I never want to see it again. <laughs> um, final thing. Our Sondheim Song Canon. Now, we all have already recorded and released this episode, so the people will know. I don't know if a song is going to crack the top 10. This is all speaking retroactively. People will know if a song has. Mm -hmm. But our current top 10 is 10, Getting Married Today, 9, Could I Leave You, 8, Rose's Turn, 7, Company, 6, Epiphany, 5, Send in the Clowns, 4, Losing My Mind, 3, Ladies of Lunch, 2, Being Alive, 1, A Little Priest. Now, speaking more objectively, because we Mm -hmm. try to be more objective, Mm -hmm. is I think there'll be a lots of Into the Woods stuff in the 10 to 40 range, bumping a lot of stuff down. But is there a single song from uh, Into the Woods that can crack that top 10? Our top, both of our top was Stay With Me, wasn't it? Uh, no. It's What's my, it's... Uh, my top is Finale, Children Will Listen. Oh, Children Will Listen is good, though. I could, yeah, I should have put that in my top five. Honestly, Ugh, it's a great finale. Them. It's and, and yeah. I think it, it's sort of a cheat because it, it it has into the woods, but it also has no one is alone. Like yeah. I prefer that to actual no one is alone. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, I. Th- I mean, I. Not getting married today for me. I I'm not that like attached to it. But mm. I don't know. A controversial opinion. No, I think it's it's a justified. I it is kind of. I don't know. It's it's that dangerous thing of everybody can everybody mm, no everybody can't do it as we know. No. Yes. Um, it became a bit of my party trick at certain parties. People knew I could do it. I and, have seen you do it at a party, and it is impressive. But also, not really. If you just learn it, it's yeah. fine. It's not that hard. It's not that much different from singing a rap song. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> So I think many people have said that before that um, getting married today is not like the <laughs> NWA of its time. <laughs> so I don't know. I think maybe that one will be bumped. 
but you mm. you're discussing this with Will, so I guess we'll find I am, out. Yeah. Well, this is the thing, right? Will's going to have abs- this is again retroactive because it's already happened, but it hasn't happened, but it's already happened. Mm-hmm. Will played the Baker, so he's going to have huge, huge Baker bias. This happens every single time, and he always slips in a song that he would like to sing. Like I can't remember what what show we did, but he was like, "Let's just say that um, I don't know." He would play Anthony, so like I've put Joanna as my favorite song. He didn't. But that would be what, that's the sort of shit he will do. And he will put no more in the top five, I have no doubt. And he will have, mm, I don't know what else he'll have, but he'll have no more in there. And I'm going to say no, no, no more, no more question. I don't think any of the Baker's songs are that great. Like, in Apart from It Takes Two. Yes, because it's a duet yeah. with the Baker's wife. <laughs> I mean, Will, oh. me and Will have been threatening this entire time, a, a cabaret evening of, of duets. <laughs> Um, where I would always play the female. Um, apart from what he told me was "Hello, little girl," but <laughs> that's the only one. <laughs> where I would but like, <laughs> you know, an evening of Sundown Cabaret, and I'm going through. I mean, sure, I could do all the male songs, but also, uh, you know, could I leave you in lazy lunch and getting married today, and and uh, yeah. Rose's turn, and everything's coming at Rose's, and more in my repertoire, yes. um, <laughs> as you have seen. I, um, yeah, because we read Trial of Ian Don Leo. Mm-hmm. I, I vividly remember you singing that entire song I and I was so drunk song. I was so drunk and I still remember it so yes it's defining great, moment it's a great it's a great memory and this is how I want all, all people to remember me um that was Into the Woods thank you very much Anna bonus episode on uh the Regent's Park Theatre production uh thank you very very much and um that yeah that bonus but we have uh <clears throat> We have one more, as alluded to, we have one more Into the Woods episode left. Um, do, you want to, do you want to come on the film one, Hannah? <laughs> I, if it means I have to watch the film again, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> was, I will. If you need a guest, I'll be No, there. it's all right. We've got Will. I wanted, I wanted you <laughs> to say, I wanted you to say, God, no. <laughs> That's what I wanted. God, no. That's more like it. da 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 da